Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got map updates, funky new Oakleys, new bike and NFT shoes. Oh, plus, we're going to discuss if cycling is finally starting to catch up Formula One in terms of technology because something pretty special happened last week. Really? Yeah, it did. Wait mm -hmm. and see. Let's do it. First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. So last week we asked if you guys thought that the Tour de France was the fastest yet due to tech improvements. Ollie, hit us with the results. Well, 58% of you agreed that it was. Mm. But 42% said no. And of those people that said no, there were quite a lot of comments saying, yeah. no, we think there's naughty business happening. Yeah, lots of people said that, both on the yep. poll and under the, the video last week. Yeah. Interesting. A lot of, there's a lot of sceptical people out there. I did see a handful of people putting it down to nutrition, though. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> nutrition. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyway, this Who week, knows? Uh, I want to discuss something from the Women's Tour de France, finished last week. But before we do that, I want you and everyone at home to cast your minds back to the 12th of November, 2020, Tech Show episode 151, and if my mind serves me correctly, about six minutes and 31 seconds into the show, where we said this. What I'd like to see is live team radio data. I think, I think along the lines of Formula One, I think mm. it'd be great to see. So not only that, last week at the Tour de France Fam Avic Zwift, they were playing live race radio from all the riders and the teams on the live TV broadcast. How incredible is that? It's like you predicted the future. You're like basically Nostradamus. Basically. Either that. Or they um, they watched the show uh, at ASO, or, and, and then they stole your idea. That's quite a lot. Or inspired. Option. That's a more positive spin on it. Yeah, I've got to say it was incredible, though, wasn't it? Mm, Having all that cool. sort of insight into what the teams are up to, how the riders are feeling, the race tactics, and stuff like that, really adds like another dimension to the experience you get when you're watching. I think it was a good thing. What do you think? I think it's wicked as well. But mm. not all the teams signed up for it. Oh, no, they didn't. That's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that. You see, all of the teams had the option to be involved, get all their race radio up onto the live television. However, I think it was nine out of all of the teams agreed to doing it, and some of them sort of were a bit resistant. A few different reasons for this. Why? Um, so, interesting point, actually. One of the reasons given was because it wasn't so much that the team were against um, the use of their race radio, they were against giving it away for free. So what do you think of that? Well, they're trying to make money. They are trying to make money. But cast your minds back again to that same tech show, and then we were also discussing how people felt about giving their data away for free. Oh, yeah. So that's kind of what they're saying. Yeah. They're saying they, they were open to the idea of it, but they felt like it was such valuable information that they would want, they would basically want I to I don't necessarily agree with that. I think like mm. what you're doing is you're making, by making the the sport and the coverage more engaging and more interesting to watch, mm -hmm. they're going to attract, hopefully, a bigger audience, which is what their goal should be, to make mm. and more attention from sponsors and then more money from sponsors yep. if the audience is bigger. And that's what makes the sport sustainable. So I don't think... Yeah, I can kind of you know see both I mean? like, sides of it, really. They're a chicken and the egg. So, I thought, when you said that they wouldn't agree to do it, I thought maybe it's because they've got like a really sort of shouty, sweary, direct to <laughs> be all bleeped out. Yeah, he just <laughs> swears all the time. I mean, it could be that. And they're worried about getting the Swiss franc fines, fines from the UCI. Um, I think it would add another level to the racing, because imagine if, well, I guess presumably other teams can listen in and they'll be able to hear if like such and such riders having a bad day, they're like feeling retired, they've been dropped, and you could just get all your team to respond to, um, you know, sort of setbacks that other teams are having. Mm. Could be quite interesting. So this was trialled by the ASO at the moment. I don't know whether it's going to be introduced in any other major events, but I think it would be incredible to see it rolled out. More. Do you know what though? I think we could, and it could, it could have a different change on the sport because yeah. you could just start seeing teams talking in code. Well, that's because if they don't want to give their t tactics yeah. away, they might start just talking in code. Well, that's it. That's actually basically what happens in Formula One, mm. which I feel like they're trying to sort of mimic that principle and idea of because all the teams can listen. They're like, oh, go to strategy B, and then they've got all different ones, and all the, they all know what each one is. Yeah. So imagine, imagine if you've got the codes mixed up, and you'd said the wrong one, and the riders did the other thing. It'd yeah. be a bit, a bit of a pain, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
So they didn't do this in the men's Tour de France, and I had no idea this was going to happen until I was watching live, on demand, and ad-free on GCN Plus. Um, and uh, territory restrictions apply. And um, sorry, New Zealand. And I saw they were doing it, and I was like, Pfft. mind blown. Well, if you didn't watch on GCN Plus and you missed out, we've actually got some really cool clips. So take you a see what we're on about and listen. Yeah, take a listen as well. There is a big gap, but on the last climb, you can come back, girl. There you go. Yeah, I'm close to the medical car, but I'm... the elbow is beating a lot. So it turns out, occasionally, we do predict the future correctly, although. Remember that death of tubular tyres countdown timer? And the rim brake extinction clock. Yeah, we didn't get those right. They've been going no. for so, so they've been going so long, in fact. I've had to put some new batteries in those a couple of times. Yeah. Here they are now. So. Tubular tyres have nearly gone, though. Nearly. I think um, Movis are single-handedly keeping them going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rim brakes have sort of come to a bit of an end in the pro peloton, though. I think that's fair to say, isn't it? I, yeah, I think yeah. that's. I think they've died now. But uh, there are still bikes you can buy with rim brakes. Yeah, thankfully. Uh, and yeah, um, but uh, we want to have a poll and oh, find out. Do, we should have a do poll you, on this. Would you like to see race radio in like all race broadcasting that, that you watch? God, I think that'd be incredible, wouldn't it? Well, it gets back to that argument of should race radios be banned? Because some people go. No race radios at all. So in the poll, we're going to have to have three options, or do you want two? So we're going to have yes or no, and then just ban race radios? Yeah, because okay. when you watch races like the World Championships, no race yeah. radio. So it has an impact on the tactics. Yeah, okay, I'll go with that. So if you want to vote on our poll, head over to the GCN app. There'll be a link in the description down below, and we'll discuss the results next week. But I guess, in essence, sort of to answer our original question, is cycling catching up with Formula 1 in terms of technology? I don't think so. Still a fair way behind. Cycling's improving, but I mean, four ones top of the list, isn't it? Mm. Mm, cool. It's now time for hot and spicy tech, Ollie. First up, yeah, we have got an update from Google Maps. Yes. That can benefit us cyclists. That's actually that's actually very true. Um, so Google Maps have offered route planning for cyclists for a little while now, but they've recently updated it so that when you put your destination in, it offers a couple of different options. So it will highlight a route which it thinks could potentially have the most traffic on, and then it will highlight an alternative route which uses as much cycling infrastructure as possible. So yeah. cycle lanes, bike paths, um, and all that kind of jazz. Pretty cool, eh? It is good, yeah. And I like having both the options, because it depends on what bike you're riding. Yeah. Certain bikes, you don't want to be on the cycle path. That's and, true. And like, if you're like with, you know, kids or whatever, or if you're just riding slowly, cycle paths can be better, can't they? But if you're in full-on aero mode... Like you are, most of the time. <laughs> and you want to go fast, you can't really go fast on a cycle path. No. What about your ride into GCN Megabase? What would you use that for? No? Google no. Maps? TT bike. Of course. Um, <laughs> on the subject of maps, we've also got an update from Komoot, one of our channel partners. So take a look at this right. They've got a new feature called Trail View. So this is like AI-powered technology, and they're combining images that are submitted from all their plethora of users. In fact, we've got 15 million images, Komoot was saying, from their 28 million users, which have been used to scan and create the trail view which gives you a sort of better understanding of the terrain you're likely to encounter on your route. I do like that you mm. get the pictures yeah. on Kamut. That is When you cool. see like people have seen a good bit on their ride and they take a picture. It's re it really like helps you pick the best Yeah, the, that's, like, what, that's what I was just about the to best say. Spots. It kind of is going to help you maybe if you're out on the gravel bike and you want to know that the route that you're doing is suitable for your mm, level of experience. Mm. I think that's probably quite helpful. That is good as mm. well, yeah. Tell you what, Connor is actually right Kamut nerd, isn't he? He loves planning routes. He'll, he'll be so excited about this feature. Right. Next up, we've got some ridiculously bling shoes. Now, yeah. these belong to Tade Bogaccia. Yeah. And they're available as an NFT. Yeah. Now, you're not, I feel like you're not loving the NFT bit of I this. just... I don't really... I know what NFTs are. Yeah. I just don't really understand them. I think it's maybe because of my age. Yeah, I'm I mean, you are, quite, you are quite old. Maybe it's one for the, the young'uns. It's one for the kids out there. Yeah. So the shoes that Tade Pogaccia wore on the last stage of the Tour de France, um, DMTs, their sort of top spec shoes. They look incredible. They do look incredible, but they've been customised and modified with 138 
Yes, yeah. 138 brilliant cut diamonds on the logos, and they're now up for auction. So you'll not only get an NFT, which you don't quite understand, it's effectively a picture, a digital image you get to buy, but Great thing is, you actually get the real shoes this time. As but well. I don't understand why the NFT is like see, is being sold as like the main thing, and then oh, and on the side, you also get <laughs> the as a actual bonus, valuable shoe. You get the shoe with the actual diamonds on it. I don't understand why it's not like oh, you get the shoes, and then as an added bonus, you get an NFT of the shoes. That would make a lot more sense in my eyes yeah. as well. Maybe I'm too old for this as well. But because the NFT, I understand how it can work as like a proof of, a proof of authenticity for that yeah, I get shoe. That. So if these mm. shoes are a one-off, mm -hmm. it means that no one can kind of copy and make a fake pair. Like they have to have the NFT that yeah. is like. But surely, as you say, the most valuable and um, sort of attractive part of this is the real shoe that Pagacha wore yeah. and have diamonds on them. Yeah. Um, in fact, so yeah, the 138 brilliant cut stones have got a total carat weight of 3.62, and all of the, well not all, 85% of the proceeds from the auction will go to the Tano Pagacha Cancer Foundation. So it's going to a good cause. And I was trying to do a little bit of quick maths actually to work out how much 3.62 carats of diamonds were worth. Yeah. But I did Google it and got quite a vague answer, you see. Um, one carat of diamonds is worth between $1,300 and $16,500. So quite a wide price range there. It hasn't really helped me out much. No. Um, nonetheless, uh, going to be one expensive pair of shoes. I wonder how much they're going to go mm. for. I have literally no idea. Wow. Um, pretty crazy. Um, next up in hot tech, take a look at these. There's some new glasses from Oakley. Quite an out there design, would you say? Yeah, I yeah. saw Mark Cavendish do a mm. post on social media where he was yeah. waxing lyrical about them, about how amazing they look. Um, the what, Zeus AG. Yeah. What do you guys think of them? I can't wait to see what everyone thinks of them. Let them know in the comments section yeah. down below. But, cool thing is, if you fire up your laptop, you can go on... <laughs> I'm all fire, fired up. Firing up. You can go onto the Oakley website, load up this thing. And Bear with us, because we're actually doing this for real. When my web page loads, you can try on the glasses. Get this, right, activate the camera. Bear with, activating camera. Bear with. Oh, here we go, right. So you can try them on, move close to the screen like this. Yeah, stay still, fit in the glasses. Why don't you screen record that? Yeah, well, I'll, I'm gonna screen record this for everyone at home. Look at this, what do you think? Good? Can I do it? Yeah, you can have a go. Oh, you look cool. Um, yeah. Maybe a bit too out there for you and I? Can you change the colour? Oh, I don't know about that. Right, okay, so a little bit of sensible information for you about the Zeus glasses. So, Oakley say it melds the innovative shape of the Oakley Kato, which is enabled by physiomorphic geometry with design influences taken from the Kabuto of Samurai, creating a disruptive design that makes a statement. Cool. <laughs> uh, we've got a new bike next. So Cervelo has mm. now officially launched the new Cervelo S5, yeah. which was being used by Jumbo Visma at the Tour de France. Pretty good advert yeah. for a new bike, that, isn't it? Yes. Like, considering how well the team did. Yeah. Um, and, well, also, not only that, Marianne Voss. Oh, yeah. At the Tour de France Femme Avec Zwift, <laughs> rode it to victory too. Yes. So, um, pretty good. Um, I, I bet you can't guess what Cervelo is saying about the new bike. No, but go on. Lighter, yep. faster, more aerodynamic and stiffer than the previous one. Well, I didn't see that coming. I know, neither did I. Um, <laughs> so, they say it saves 65 grams of aero drag over the previous one. I'm not actually that familiar with. Yeah, well, they don't grams. really give that any like context. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of quite hard to say what that means. So you see, I I knew you were going to say that. I've done a bit of research uh, online, and you can sort of estimate that when ridden at about 40 kilometers an hour, a reduction of 65 grams in drag roughly equates to somewhere in the region of six to seven watts. Now that's just a real loose guide to give you an example in watts, but. You know, it's a significant saving, isn't it? It is. It's a, well, it's a, you know, that is a significant saving, especially to someone 
racing at that level. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Also, some of the weight savings that you've discussed come from a revised bar design. So it's got that V-shaped um, sort of stem which goes up to the handlebar. And also, Savello was saying you can fit up to 34 millimeter wide tires. Still big, getting wider. Big chunky boys in there. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It looks cool. I think um, one thing though, but I always say the, that that aero difference is, is, is significant, but it's not as significant as uh, the difference from going from tubular tires to some fast clinches and latex tubes. Heard it here. Well, not fast for about the tenth time. Yeah. <laughs> Change the record. <laughs> As we record this week's show, the Commonwealth Games is in full swing and there's been some exciting action out on the velodrome there and it's been cool looking at some of the tech, especially as we're not too far away from Paris now. No. Now, the GB athletes representing home nations are um, using, a lot of them using the Hope Lotus bike. Laura Kenny's bike, right, mm -hmm. she won the scratch race ridiculous how narrow her handlebars were. Teeny tiny. Yeah, so yeah. like the riders behind her that she beat, they were, you could see them behind it like on huge, yeah, like road bar handlebars. Huge handlebars, yeah. like normal size handlebars. <laughs> Laura Trot was like, like this, they were like, honestly, they were about that wide. It was that is crazy, isn't it? outrageous. Um, but I also noticed some of the yep. other riders, they were using, rather than using the 3D printed titanium components that were designed for that. Like the aero bike. bars. Yeah, like the cockpit and yep. stuff. They were using standard bars and stems. Really? Yeah, oh. which I wonder if it's because they're just trying to adjust the position and try and ride in a different position. And it's, well, it's probably quite, it, it's you not. You can't exactly just, I'll just rattle mock, up, mock up a few really expensive titanium 3D yeah. printed bits, please. Oh, actually, can you just move it a little back a couple of mil? I just want to get another set made. Yeah, and then the other, okay. the other interesting thing is like, and this is, this is definitely a Team GB thing. Yeah. Because other teams just seem to use this, the same sort of stuff, but the, the, they were using a, an, an interesting front wheel, which was they're using a Corama four spoke front wheel rather than other wheels that we've seen them use and what they used in the Olympics um, mm -hmm. last time uh, in Tokyo. And I wonder if there's this thing that they've done in the past where they don't use the best equipment until it's the Olympics. Yeah. I, Either that, yeah. or they found that this Corama wheel is faster in the Hope bike. I don't know. Maybe they're keeping like top secret tech ready. Who knows? Anyway, nerdy, nerdy track tech for you. Um, and then finally in hot tech, we've actually got a bit of an update on the app side of things. So GCM Plus here. So should I just rattle off these updates? Because there's quite a few to go through. It right, is. okay. So GCM Plus app has now launched in English language on Apple TV. There's now a GCM Plus iPad app. You've got Android TV, Fire TV in all markets. You've got compatibility with Samsung TV in the US on post-2018 models. That means that you can now watch on your mobile, cast your TV, Apple AirPlay, Chromecast, or watch it on the web on the web address, which we'll put in a link in the description down below. My, all pretty incredible. Yeah, right? my number one way to, I just um, Chromecast off my iPhone. Onto the, onto the telly. I do exactly the same, to be honest. Yeah. Easiest way for me. Fantastic. Uh, more hot tech next week. It's now time for comment of the week. Could you just do that jingle again? Comments of the week. Oh, music to my ears. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. First comment from underneath last week's tech show was from, we've got one here from Sam Black. It says, part of the answer that tour was so fast. Wow, Van Art. Just on the front. <laughs> yeah. Every day. Incredible. Yeah. What else have we got here from Barchenko? A bit more of a cynical comment. Yeah, slightly. I believe team chemistry played a bigger role than all the technical advances. That's what that means when they do that. Te the technical. <laughs> I'm going to have to do that every time we read We don't know, do we? We don't we know. We have no idea. We don't know. Um, it's all speculation. It is. Anyway, also, another question from uh, Reynold Everest. Um, did Alex crash because of his cherished tubeless tyres? Should have gone tubular. No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't actually have tubeless tyres when I crashed. You not? I had um, tubes and tyres and tubes. Oh. Maybe that could have saved me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Might have sealed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, talking of punctures, actually, underneath my Can You Make Puncture Proof Tires video last weekend, which incidentally is almost at 5,000 likes, and I said I'd revisit the idea and try and do a bit of a proper job on it. Oh, right. Yeah, so we've got a comment from Stephen underscore 1507. Not worried about the tire, but that Dura Ace rim might be wasted. Make a second video and show us how to clean up the rim. Well, actually, only yesterday, 
you were around uh, my house, aka GCN Mini Base. Yeah. And Sat we had satellite to, moon base. <laughs> yeah, we had to take the tire and the <laughs> sealant um, foam all off. It actually came off okay. Well, the, the rim's not damaged, but it was a bit of a pain taking it apart, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually pretty impressive. I could see how it could work with better execution. I actually bought the the foam that we cut out in, but it's upstairs at GCN Mega Base. What mm. I'll do is, after we film the show, I'll get film it and show everybody. It looks mm. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I also like Brian Blaster 2's comment on that video, who said, I enjoyed Ollie's <laughs> honest reaction to it. Yeah. What did you say? Did you say crap? It's crap. Always get an honest answer. I think it's got me. potential. Yeah. Okay. I do think it's got some potential, but yeah. Okay. Heavy and as well, though. Yeah. Really heavy. Right. And then last comment this week was from underneath the World Superbike Tech video we had, Hank and Manon. Ed Coupe says, Next week on Battle of the Tech, Hank versus Golden Retriever. Funny comment as it is. <laughs> a reply to that comment. Someone saw so APM said about the same on looks, happiness, and speed, but Hank will lose at the tubby rubbing reaction test. Who do you think would make a better guide dog for the blind, Hank or a golden retriever? Without a shadow of a doubt, golden retriever. <laughs> Are they really guide dogs though? Isn't that Labradors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, well, that's all our comments for this well, week. Hopefully, more comments next week, unless none of you comment on our videos, in which case there won't be any. I'm going to pick out all the best ones. I love going through those. Um, right. Anyway, it's now time for the Bike Vault. As I say it every week, it's my favourite part of the show. And first up, we've got the most Jet super Jet nice. Jetsy Ball with the most super nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is interesting, this. It's a BH, right? Mm -hmm. But it's got, and we don't see a lot of this, FSA Wii Group set on it. I can't say I've seen many of those. It's really cool, isn't it? It does look cool. It's, yeah. um, I actually really like the colours. I'm presuming this is their team team edition bike. Yeah, it's cool. It stands out. It pops. And I like the bar tape that matches. Ah, it's a suit. I, uh, I mean, it's not in Biggie Smalls, though. Well, well it's, it's Biggie, Biggie to keep it parallel. I think we super nice, that. We can super nice it. Yeah. Why the hell not? Uh, next up, we've got... Uh, Oh, we don't have an author User name. <laughs> ID 11671. Catchy. Hmm. Must be one of Elon Musk's children. Um, <laughs> who's got this picture of their S-Works Tarmac SL7 in the Swiss Alps. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's super nice, isn't it? Easy. Easy, super nice. We don't miss about. Ceramic speed boy on the back as well. Oh, we've also really got clean. to mention, if you want to submit your own bike or play along at home, hello to the GCN app. Submit your pictures, vote on everyone's nice and super nice. Yeah. Great fun. Uh, next up is from... SM Nicktin. Yeah. Nick Nicktin. Nicktin. Is a Merida Reacto. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, matchy matchy both. Oh, I like Ooh. it, yeah. Oh, that is and nice. the wheels aren't aligned. Close, though. I think it's super nice. I he's really also like got this, a, um, a Bahrain, he's got a Bahrain bead on on there as well. Yeah. I think we can go super I'm nice. I'm going to super nice that. Yeah. Like his speed plays as well. Next up is Mi Migios. Migios with a... Migios. Uh, How do you even say the name of this bike? Guachiotti. Hopefully. If we've said it correctly, let us know. If we've said it incorrectly... They definitely will. They'll definitely let us know. Um, what do you reckon? Oh, Actually, it's quite cool to see a little bit of an older school bike. It is. Slightly heartbreaking, they haven't used a shadow stand. I am, yeah. Shadow stands available from Shoprock Global Cycling Network. <laughs> um, but we are. I like the, I like the uh, blue lugs with the fade to white on the main sections of tubes. I think the drivetrain could be a bit cleaner. The... Oh, I, I don't want to be too picky, because it is... I like that bar all... tape, though, you know. Are we going to just super nice this? Keep the theme going? Go on, then. Oh, we're very lenient. Go on, then. People will be upset that we're so lenient. Afro Thunder. <laughs> Afro Gravel Ride. Yeah, with his um, WTB. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's got Gates on it. Oh, it's a Gates belt drive. I'm not sure what bike it is. A priority, it says on the frame. I'm wow. not sure what that is. I've never seen one before. Gates belt drive. I'm, I'm quite a fan of a belt drive. It's got an Alphine hub because mm. it's got gears in the back. It's got Shimano Alphine hub. I um, Matchy matchy water bottles. Yeah. What are we thinking then? I'm thinking... It's a shame it's not quite level, but if I tilt my laptop like this, it's level. Yeah. Do we want to... I'm thinking... The saddlebag is on there. There's I'm a thinking, bar bag, but that's acceptable. we can go there. 
Yeah. Super nice. <laughs> Oldie but Goldie next with um, with what is this? Another BH. Wow. Well, yeah. I very often see a BH bike, do I? Like buses. <laughs> yeah. God. Um, what do you make of that? Well, you need to cut your grass. Hang on a minute. Whoa, cut whoa. Your grass. There's some weird like Instagram effect going on where they've tilt shifted it and then they've blurred randomly the top and the bottom, but they've also inadvertently blurred bits of the bike, which is a bit that you want to see. The saddle is a bit blurred. The garden is a, is a state. You know, what's going on there? Mow your lawn. You need to get Alan Titchmarsh around. Yeah, oh. Um, okay, well, is... we've been lenient, but I feel like we're not going to be lenient no, on this. that's a nice. It is nice. A nice is still good. It is good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and next up is Craig C952 with... Um, what is this? It's a Focus. A Focus. Oh, I quite like this. It's Alco. It, and what's funny is this isn't an old bike, but it does look a bit dated now, doesn't it? You know, the way that the paint scheme's all done. Yeah, sort of and the colours. rim brakes, yeah. Yeah. I quite like this. Yeah. Whereabouts is, whereabouts is it in the world? I don't, don't think we've got... Oh, uh, Takmadoon Road. I'm not can't sure Can't say I'm familiar is. with it. No. Not one of my usual haunts. No. Um, Valves are aligned, cranks are aligned, it's in the correct gear, accessories are removed, water bottle's on there, but I think we can let that slide. We've been lenient this week. Do you know what? I'm not, I can't, well, I can't let slide though. Grubby bar tape. Oh yeah. Okay. Grubby bar tape's nice. You're our man of principles, aren't you? It's nice. Okay, oh, I've got carried away then. Yeah. Um, oh, that's the last that's submission it. of this week's Bible. That's it. it's the end of the show. It's well, been incredible, hasn't it? It has. If, uh, well, if you want to watch next week, you want to, you want to, you know, support the channel, like, subscribe, really helps. And, uh, well, we'll see. Work you. on your bike vault submissions. Yeah. We had a load of super nice. But I think um, there's always room for improvement. There's definitely room for improvement. Um, right, Should we go? Yeah, we'll see We've you We've actually next got time. birthday cake upstairs. Someone's oh, yeah. birthday in the office today. Oh, fantastic. I'll just go get that. Bye. See you in a bit. I like cake.